Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got some really big stories, starting with a bunch of new information on the upcoming RX 6700 XT and 6700 non-XT GPUs, AMD's first MCM GPU gets leaked, and new information on AMD's Ryzen 7000 desktop and mobile processors. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, we have a really big update on AMD's upcoming RX 6700 XT and 6700 non-XT GPUs. The story originally comes from a video by Cortex, and in it, he claims that the upcoming RX 6700 XT will actually come in two different flavors. Now, before I get into them, the bad news is that AMD isn't making any real distinction between the two. They're still both the RX 6700 XT. And to be fair, there likely isn't a huge difference in performance, but it's certainly enough to matter. AIB partners will probably brand the higher end model as OC variant, so definitely be on the lookout for those if you want the faster model. Either way, the base model 6700 XT, which is apparently what the reference model is also based on, will be built on the ASIC B variant and comes in at 189 watts. The more powerful variant is based on the ASIC A variant and comes in at 230 watts. When it comes to actual performance, he claims the slower model is between 20 and 25% faster than the RX 5700 XT, and it's expected to clock between 2500 and 2600 megahertz. The ASIC A model should obviously be a few percent faster than that, but how much faster isn't really said. Both models apparently come with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 16 gigabits per second. When it comes to the release date, Cortex claims we should expect it between the 15th and 19th of March, which is right at the recent rumor claiming we should expect a release on the 18th. Lastly, Cortex claims the RX 6700 non-XT model does in fact come with 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 16 gigabits per second and is set for release sometime in April. The rest is more or less speculation, but the information on the upcoming 6700 models certainly seems to be accurate. Of course, we won't have to wait much longer to find out more, though we probably will have to wait a while until we can actually buy one. Time, as always, will tell. Of course, with all this new hardware coming out, it can get tough to know what to buy. That's why I offer my PC hardware suggestions at kit.co slash gamermelt. In it, I go over why you may want to buy one thing over another, from GPUs to CPUs and more, as well as provide tips when buying certain components. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Plus, when you make a purchase, it helps the channel out at no additional cost to you. So don't wait and visit kit.co slash gamermeld or click the link in the description below. Next up, it looks like AMD is already set to launch their next-gen CDNA-based GPU, and it actually has some big implications for AMD's next-gen gaming GPUs. For those who don't know, CDNA is AMD's new compute-based GPU architecture. AMD launched their first CDNA-based GPU with the MI100 late last year. Well, in a new post by resident leaker Komachi, we can see that AMD is already planning their updated MI200 this year, and this is likely based on AMD's next-gen CDNA architecture. Now, the big deal here is this listing of the GPU that was also shared by Komachi. As you can see, the GPU is actually listed as an MCM GPU, meaning a multi-chip module design. The reason that's such a big deal is that Navi 31, so an RX 7000 GPU, is rumored to also be based on an MCM design. Of course, remember that an MCM design is about making the system actually see two GPUs as one, similar to how AMD's Ryzen works. Ultimately, this seems to give more credence to that rumor on Navi 31. Now, with that said, we can't definitively make that conclusion because MCM-based compute GPUs are much easier than gaming GPUs, and that comes from AMD themselves just a few years ago. Then again, with the recent patent that I went over a little while back, and AMD moving to MCM-based GPUs on their CDNA architecture around the same time we should expect them with Navi 31, things are looking really, really good. The question is whether Intel's MCM GPU can beat them to the punch or not. And lastly for today, we have more information on AMD's Ryzen 7000 desktop CPUs and notebook APUs, as well as some new information on next-gen. 
Anyway, the story originally comes from the very trustworthy leaker Patrick Schur, and according to his tweet, Raphael, which is the code name for desktop Ryzen after Warhol, will require the AM5 socket. Next, he goes over Phoenix, which was actually first discovered by Komachi mid last year, though at the time, we didn't know what it was. Here, Patrick Schur makes it clear that Phoenix is the notebook Ryzen APU generation after Rembrandt, and it requires the FP8 socket. Now, this to me is actually key to something I went over a little while back. Remember that a recent report discussed the potential for a Zen 3 Plus architecture built on TSMC's 6 nanometer node. In that video, I assumed that this Zen 3 Plus would be something similar to AMD's Ryzen 3000 XT series, in that they would be a quick intermediary processor launch to hold off until Zen 4's Ryzen 6000, especially since Zen 3 Plus wasn't on any roadmap. Or perhaps I was really just hopeful. Well, this new tweet seems to hurt that theory. For one, with the fact that we're already looking at an FP8 socket. See, we're currently on FP6, which means next gen would be FP7. But why would AMD be required to move onto another socket so fast? Well, it's likely something big like Zen 4 and probably PCI Express Gen 5. Of course, this doesn't guarantee next gen won't be Zen 4, but it's not looking good. And video cards seems to think that Ryzen 7000 is also based on Zen 4. The reason this is such a big deal is that it looks like we'll likely have to wait yet another year before getting to 5 nanometers. Let's hope somehow this isn't the case, but it's not looking good. And sure, 6 nanometers is still an okay jump, but it's not really a new node. Of course, next gen will likely mark the first time rising gets to 5 gigahertz stock. Then again, Intel's finally set to move over to 10 nanometers late this year. So if this is the case, AMD may need to be a bit worried. So while that does it for today, are you still excited for Ryzen 6000 or are you just ready for next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below and definitely make sure to check out the GamerMeld Discord server at discord.gg gamermeld. And as always, have a great day!